I'd like to take you on a journey as we awaken a part of you that is most authentic and true. So I invite you to please close your eyes as we take a short trip down memory lane. As we close our eyes, let's take in a deep breath in, breathing out, deep breath in, breathing out. And as you breathe in, just bring into your awareness a time in your life when you relied on your gut feeling to make a decision that at the time may have been a little irrational, but was one of the best decisions you've made for yourself. Recall that moment when you decided, yes, I know deep down inside this decision feels true. And as you take another deep breath in, feeling your body at that moment, and what did it feel like for you? Perhaps your body was open or light or expansive or at peace. And still with your eyes remaining closed, bringing yourself into the present moment and noticing how has that one decision played a role with where you are today? And taking a deep breath in, you may go ahead and open your eyes. So with just a simple nod or a show of your hands, how many of you were able to recall an experience where you trusted your gut feeling? Beautiful. So we've all had at least one experience in our lives when we trusted our inner voice. That inner voice, gut feeling, sixth sense, that is your intuition. Your intuition is not some airy fairy, only some magical people have this superpower. It is a practical internal guidance system innately within each and every one of us. You are born with it. Thousands of entrepreneurs, CEOs, executives have used this resource and claimed that this has been a huge, success, huge asset to their success. In Richard Branson's book, Losing My Virginity, he talks about how he makes intuitive decisions within 30 seconds of meeting someone or just seeing a, seeing a proposal. Many inventors and scientists such as Albert Einstein, Thomas Edison, Jonas Salk, the creator of the polio vaccine, have all attributed many of their discoveries to intuition. So if all these people are using it successfully, why aren't we trusting it? Trusting your intuition can be scary. Going against what may be logically correct is a big risk. And we're not taught to cultivate this growing up. We live in a society where we're being taught that you must trust what is proven or what's in front of you, not what's within us. What I want for you is that you listen to your inner voice and take action on the guidance that you receive so that it's a vital resource for you to make great decisions, create a meaningful life, and live in integrity and in authenticity. One of my most significant decisions I've made for myself was really truly listening to that voice within. So growing up, I was always told, Chrissy, just be a nurse. Put all your creativity to the side and be a nurse. <laughs> and I was like, really? But what that created within me was this belief that following my heart or pursuing my passions would never be a successful route for me. So I spent most of my 20s, what I like to call freelancing my way through life, really trying to find myself. And I was a graphic designer, an artist, a muralist, decorative painter, a dancer, a photographer, a high school teacher, and all at the same time, I was developing my skills as an intuitive, psychic reader, and energy healer. In 2007, I was working as an art director for an after-school program. And that whole entire year, I came down with this nasty, harsh cough and cold every other month. It was like clockwork. I woke up New Year's Day 2008 with absolutely no voice. For an entire week, I could not speak. 
I couldn't even whisper. And I knew I was being asked to go within and listen. And what I noticed was that I was extremely unhappy, emotionally, mentally, and physically exhausted. I had no idea what I wanted to do. And I felt completely lost. So in this place of desperation, I pleaded, what am I supposed to do with myself? And then this voice within said, do what you love. And I thought that that was a joke. <laughs> I thought it was actually quite cliche. Do what you love and the rest will follow. But I decided, since I couldn't talk anyways, I might as well explore that. And I asked, all right, fine. If I'm going to do what I love, if I can wake up every single day and do something that made me totally happy, what would that be? And the voice within said, painting and giving intuitive readings. I knew I could not go back to a life unfulfilled and a life that was actually making me physically ill. So I chose to trust in that inner voice, commit to this path, and it has evolved into the work that I do today. And my body got healthy. So if we've all got this super rock star internal GPS system within us that creates opportunities, saves us time, money, and heartache, then why aren't we using it more often? How many times do we have to go through that frustration of, damn, I should have listened to myself? I should have listened to myself. This is not about whether or not intuition exists within you. It's about recognizing and releasing the blocks that get in the way of you trusting your inner voice. The way that intuition works is that our bodies act as an intuitive antenna. We're picking up vibrations of energy that's all around us. In a 2004 study at the Institute of Heart Math, there were 26 participants who, were, who received 30 pictures of 30 calm and 15 emotionally arousing photographs. What they revealed was that their brain and both their heart actually picked up energetically and they had visceral and emotional responses to these pictures even before they were shown. Therefore, they were accessing existing intuitive information that wasn't even available to their conscious mind. So what is really getting in the way here? Because when it comes to making big decisions in our lives that matter, your body is already picking up intuitively what's in alignment to you. So I've noticed that we all have this frenemy that we are so close to, and that is fear. Fear keeps us from being present. It disconnects us from our body. And it doesn't allow us to really listen to what's going on within. But I want to get specific because there are two major fears that really get in the way. And that's the fear of change and the fear of being alone. Trusting your intuition will always take you outside of your comfort zone. It is a tool for growth and transformation within you. So if you're wanting to create something in your life that you've never experienced before, it's going to be outside of what you've normally experienced in your life. And as humans, we are creatures of comfort. Our ego, and when I refer to ego, I'm talking about the fear-based mind, does not like to shake things up. It likes to know what it knows, even if what it knows is miserable. So the fear of change will arise in multiple ways when you're moving outside of what's comfortable for you. Yet change is a natural process that we all go through. We're always growing, we're always evolving, and we're just like a tree. So when the seasons shift and summer turns into autumn, a deciduous tree goes into its journey of dormancy. At that time, what happens is the layers of, there's these layers of cells called the abscission layer that develops and forms a hardened layer right between where the stem meets the branch. And then it gradually disconnects the leaf from the tree. And then naturally, as the wind blows, what happens? The leaves start to fall. And what's beautiful about this process is that when that leaf falls, 
it leaves a scar on the branch. Just above that scar is a little bud containing next spring's leaf just ready to bloom. And just like this growth and this transformation with this tree, we ourselves can go and flow in that way because a tree doesn't freak out when winter starts to come and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna lose all my leaves, I'm gonna be naked forever, I'm not gonna grow them back next spring. <laughs> and a tree doesn't try to keep all of its leaves throughout the winter. As a matter of fact, what happens is that its next step is waiting there right inside that bud. So why can't we just let our own leaves fall? Change means that we have to let go of some control in our lives, and that is a huge threat to the ego. The ego is going to want to run and hide, make you settle less for the you deserve, and It'll give you all the excuses why it is the worst idea to create possibility, opportunity, and pleasure in your life. So like the beautiful gracefulness of a tree moving through the seasons, you too can embody that natural flow of change within your life as long as you're being mindful of how the ego can step in and take you out by giving you all those excuses of why you shouldn't change. So this brings me into the next component of fear, and that is the fear of being alone. And let's just feel into that energy right now, this fear of being alone, because if I step into a situation and a decision that feels good and guided and joyful to me, but has a chance that my family may disapprove or my friends may think I'm crazy, that's really scary. Because we as humans, Innately, we just want to be loved and accepted. So we'll take into consideration other people's advice and opinions whenever we have to make a big change in our lives, which is natural and needed. Yet there comes a time we have to let go of other people's perceptions and truths in order for us to step into our own path of brilliance. When I was going through a divorce, I had to navigate this rough, terrain and fear of being alone. The thing about our situation was that there was nothing wrong. We just came into a path in our relationship where in order for us to be our best selves, it meant we had to let each other go. And this put me into a tornado of fear of being alone thoughts. What will my Filipino Catholic parents think of me and my family? They would never support this decision, and they'd probably call me the worst sinner in the world. And what if I can never find someone else? Or even worse, what if I can never find someone who would love me? I mean, come on, who wants to be with a psychic? <laughs> <laughs> but I knew I couldn't ignore my inner voice any longer, even if there weren't any concrete reasons why I need to move, why I need to move forward. So, I decided to really trust that voice again and make a choice that wasn't about making other people happy, but about making me happy. And your intuition has a beautiful way of guiding you out of situations that may no longer serve and into a life that exceeds your imagination. Steve Jobs says it beautifully. Don't let other people's opinions drown out your inner voice. Most important, have the courage to trust your heart and intuition. They always seem to know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. You know what it's like to feel that feeling of trusting your inner voice. You felt that just moments ago. And you've heard how you can embody that natural flow of change like a tree by being aware of how the ego can step in and give you all the reasons why you shouldn't. You've also heard how that fear of being alone can also get in the way. My request for you is that as you step outside into our Las Vegas community, is that you ignite your intuition 
by first being aware of when are you second guessing your gut feeling? And second, asking yourself, is this the fear of change or the fear of being alone that's keeping me from trusting myself? And third, taking in a deep breath in, breathing out, and letting go of that fear. Giving yourself that gift of silence to listen to your inner voice. And those bodily feelings of expansion, lightness, openness, and even butterflies of excitement, those are all positive signs you are heading in the most authentic direction for you. By trusting your intuition, you illuminate and express a part of you that always knows what is true. And as you do this, you'll be guided with fierce faith every step of the way. Thank you.